Hey guys, welcome to one of the fastest growing sports YouTube channels out there, Golden Blue Dude. Is it time to panic in Nebraska? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Let's go. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's me again, Golden Blue Dude. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I do college football videos every single day. Quick reminder, I'm about to launch my score prediction contest. Every week, I'm going to pick out one game and I'm going to have you guys guess the score of that game. The person that comes closest to the score wins the cash prize. All you have to do is go over to my Patreon page, join my Patreon page, and email me your score prediction. Right now, the prize money, I'm going to list it at 50, but between now and Friday, if there's not enough people that join my Patreon page, I'll I'll have to lower it to twenty dollars so make sure to encourage the other subscribers to join my patreon page so that that prize level can be high deadline to get your score prediction will be 6 p.m every friday and you can win more than once so you can win a lot of money in a single month or throughout the entire college football season so the size of the prize money is up to you guys the lowest membership is only 4.99 a month the very first game of my score prediction contest is going to be clemson versus georgia y'all give me your score prediction and we'll see who comes the closest and wins that prize money Scott Frost and Nebraska might be in some trouble. Yesterday, they went to Champaign to play Illinois, and they got beat 30-22. to That's not good. That's one of the games that I had Nebraska winning. I thought that there was an outside chance for Nebraska to get to a bowl, but this was one of those games to get them to 6-6. Six and six. Here's their remaining schedule. You get Fordham at home, Buffalo at home, then at number 2, Oklahoma, at Michigan State, Northwestern at home, Michigan at home, at Minnesota, Purdue at home, number 4, Ohio State at home, at number 12, Wisconsin, and then number 18, Iowa at home. The good news for Nebraska is you probably played your worst game as far as mistakes go yesterday. When Golden Blue Dude is wrong, I come out and admit it. On my spread pick, I picked Nebraska and I laid the seven. I was completely wrong. That's about the wrongest I've ever been. Not only did I miss the spread, but Illinois straight up upset Nebraska. The weird thing is Nebraska actually outgained Illinois. They had 392 offensive yards. Illinois had 326 offensive yards. And Nebraska has not been good under Scott Frost. A total record of 12 and 20. Yikes. And Illinois starting quarterback Peters got knocked out of the game with the shoulder injury in the first quarter. So Illinois was playing with their second string quarterback. I mean, everything that could go wrong went wrong for Nebraska yesterday. Mistake after mistake after mistake. Adrian Martinez was sacked five times. He fumbled for the scoop and score. That fiasco that led to a safety. A roughing the passer penalty that negated an interception hurt them. Two missed extra points. I did a halftime live show and I said Scott Frost, this is where you prove that you belong at Nebraska. You gotta coach those mistakes out of your players right now. What happens? Illinois comes out, chews up eight minutes of clock, and scores a touchdown to go up 23 to 9. Then they add another touchdown on top of that to go up 30 to 9 in the third quarter. Nebraska did mount a comeback with two more touchdowns, so they brought the score 30 to 22. And they got the ball back in the final minute. So they had a chance to send it to overtime. But it wasn't meant to be. Nebraska loses this game 30-22. to Check this out. After the game, Scott Frost says this. I still believe this team could still have a special season. I guess that's possible, but y'all cannot play like you did yesterday. Nebraska was the better team. I do agree with that. But the mistakes just piled up. You can't do that. Quarterback Adrian Martinez, he went 16 for 32. Threw for 232 yards. One touchdown. No interceptions. He also carried the the ball 17 times for 111 yards so he did what he was supposed to do except for that scoop and score and he got sacked five times. Nebraska's running backs did not show up. A total of 55 yards of rushing by the running backs. Not good at all. In every game, there's a stretch of time that decides the entire game. Here's the sequence that I think decided this game. Nebraska was up 6-2 and had a chance for a touchdown. Quarterback Adrian Martinez overthrows his tight end, and they had to settle for a field goal and went up 9-2. Then, on the ensuing possession, Nebraska intercepted Illinois, but that was negated by that roughing the passer penalty. Illinois ends up scoring on that drive, to tie the ball game 9-9. Nebraska gets the ball back, and with about a minute left in the quarter, going into halftime, quarterback Adrian Martinez fumbles for the scoop and score, so Illinois goes into halftime up 16-9. And then the start of the third quarter. Illinois chews up eight minutes of clock and scores a touchdown to go up 23-9. That's where the game was decided right there, that stretch. Here's the scoring quarter by quarter. Is there still hope for Nebraska? Here's one thing that I did notice. Quarterback Adrian Martinez, when he couldn't find his wide open receiver, and there was a lot of them, 
him, he would panic and dance around in the backfield. Don't do that. If you can't find the receiver, tuck the ball immediately and run. You are a dual threat quarterback. Don't take the sack. Three yards is better than losing four yards. I think Adrian Martinez has the potential to be a really good quarterback, but his decision making has to be much better. And whenever the quarterback is dancing back there in the backfield, it causes your offensive line to hold because you can only hold a block for so long and then it turns into holding. And that's what happened yesterday as well. You lost to an inferior team yesterday. I think Nebraska's season is done. They're not getting to a ball. The glory days of the big red machine are well in the past. It's time to fire Scott Frost and the sooner the better. I'm talking today, immediately, right now. There is no future with Scott Frost at Nebraska. He's gonna be fired, might as well get it over with. That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on my next show.